This is what I call my server room. Obviously, it's a closet. And this is my home server Cambot. It's my file server. It's my media server. It records TV for me. And soon, it's going to be my phone server as well. So every year or so, I have to rebuild this computer. And every single time I do it, I take all the hard drives that I've collected over that time, and I go ahead and add them in. Now the problem is, every single hard drive slot in this thing is full. But, I'm not short on additional drives. So, I have to come up with a system that lets me expand my storage capacity to fill the needs that I currently have. That means I have to come up with some sort of modular system that allows me to add new hard drives as I acquire them. It just so happens I've got this piece of plywood that I salvaged that is 4x4. Four four. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which sides are the ugliest and I'm going to take off half an inch from either side and that'll give me an eighth inch play to fit in that wall. And I think I'm going to take a page out of Frank Howarth's book and I'm going to do French cleats to hang up all my computer hardware on this piece of plywood. Alright, time for some quick math here. I've got 48 inch tall piece of plywood. I need to divide that up into n number of pieces that are i inches tall. So, n times i equals 48. So if I can find either the desirable number of boards or the desired height of each board, then I can figure out exactly what I need to cut my strips to be. So just as a starting point, let's say I want 12 boards. 48 divided by 12 is 4 inches. Well, that's much too big for uh, what I want to do here. 3 inches is a good height, I believe. That'll give me 16 slots. That seems like a great number. So now that I've laid out my first set of marks, I can see that 3 inches is really too big. However, I can just go down to an inch and a half, and that ought to be perfect. All right, here's the plan. I'm going to cut this into three inch wide strips. I'm going to angle the blade on my table saw to 45 degrees, and then I'm going to cut those three inch strips in half. That way I've got both halves of my cleat. They're not the same width. What I was expecting is that when I made my cut, I was thinking the blade would tilt from the center at 45 degrees, giving me a perfectly centered cut. But in reality, the blade tilts from the bottom, giving me an off-centered cut. I just finished cutting all my slats, and I have to figure out how to cut it down the middle. And, uh... Uh... Excuse me. So I've got a set of nail guns, but I don't have an air compressor. So what I've ended up doing is just gluing each of these boards down individually and clamping them for about an hour before moving on to each board. It took me a couple days that way, but uh, it's all done now, so I'm going to sand up these edges to get rid of the splinters and chop off the excess edges that I have here. Alright, I've got a piece of plywood cut out to mount my motherboard on, and I'm going to have a lot of wires dangling off of the bottom of here. So I think I'm going to mount this vertically to minimize the amount of stress on the motherboard, the board, and the French cleats. Uh, but first, to do that, I have to mark off the mount holes on the motherboard so that I can put these brass standoffs in place. Alright, now I've got all my standoffs in place. Now I'm going to put this over and glue on some French cleats. Now that I've got the motherboard figured out, I need to start on the power supply next. And it's got a fan on this side, it's got the exhaust on this side, it's got the wires on this side, it's got power cable and power switch on this side, so I have to figure out a direction that can come out against the wall where I'm not going to cover up any of these important sides. So what I've decided is to go ahead and put this side up against the wall. Oh, hi Zig. 
So this is the side that's going to end up getting mounted against the wall, and that's going to put these power cables pointing the wrong direction, but I think that'll be an okay thing. Uh, they are certainly got a long enough reach where it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, I'm getting a little bath. A little cat bath. Oh, I'm getting my ear cleaned. So I've marked out the profile of the power supply, so I'm just going to cut that bottom piece out, and then I'll have my sides as well, and I'll cut a strip off of this end to serve as my back plate. So for my power supply mount, I've got the sides, the front, and the cleats all glued on. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry, and while I wait for that to happen, I'm working on how to mount the laptop hard drive here, and I've just cut out a piece of very thin plywood, and I'm going to mark the underside mount holes on the plywood so I can drill those out and put screws through here, and then I can glue on my bracket. Okay, each one of these drives is one inch thick. Now, I want a little wiggle room between each drive, so let's add a quarter of an inch, which makes 1.25 for each hard drive. Now, I'm going to have about 10 drives, which is a nice lucky round number, because that means I have 12.5 inches that I need to allot for my hard drives. So as luck would have it, I found a board that was exactly the right width for the length of my hard drive. So I cut it down into two 12 and a half inch long pieces. And now I'm going to go ahead, drill holes for the mount on the hard drive, countersink the holes, mount a hard drive at the top, one at the bottom so that they're exactly the right width apart. Then I can go ahead and put plates on the top and bottom. Alright, so I started out by taping the boards together, then I measured down my inch and a quarter for my horizontal row where the screws go. Then using my speed square and a hard drive, I marked the screw locations. And then I carried the screw locations all the way down, marked the horizontal lines with the speed square, and they gave me all my drill locations. All right, here's the completed result. The hard drive rack, power supply, of course the motherboard and all the expansion cards. Here I even have a place for a keyboard. Above it is a spot for a monitor. If you want to know more about how to build these shelves, I highly recommend checking out Frank Howarth's video. I'll link to that in the description below. Above and behind me is actually a new addition. It is my PFSense router. If you want to see more computer-based videos, I will be starting another channel based on my technical experience. So keep an eye out for that. I'll link it down in the description below once I have it ready. I think the thing that I learned most in this build is that once you build one of these boxes, the second time it's much, much easier. The first one, which is up there for the router, is really kind of shaky and not very good, but this one turned out much, much better. Another thing that I learned about is the importance of sanding and the quality of the finish of the product. Just a little bit of sanding on this one went a long, long way. It's one of those things that we all hate to do. It's a step that we're tempted to skip sometimes, but it's important not to skip it. Special thanks this time to Frank Howworth. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know about French cleats, and frankly, this is amazing. Before, it was a pain in the butt to move around in here, and now I'm all over the place. This has saved a lot of space in here. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button or even subscribe. Alright, thank you for watching.